Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Community Hall Meeting, Town of Qualicum Beach. And I just want to confirm that we are holding this on these additional territories of the Coast Salish people, in particular, our friends to the, to the west, the Qualicum First Nation. Um, this is Community Hall, and we have an agenda, so I'm going to ask Council any changes to the agenda. Then the agenda is adopted by consent. Delegations. And the first one, it gives us great pleasure to welcome the Qualicum Memorial Golf Course for their presentation. You have 20 minutes. Okay, I missed that instruction. Okay, I'm here representing the Qualicum Beach Memorial Golf Course. Um, the first thing I'd like to do is a few introductions of the board that is sitting presently. So the first one I'd like to introduce is Paul McPhee, who's in charge of finance. Can I wave a wave? Um, Rob Dyack, Course and Greens. I don't believe he's here right now. Um, David Lane, House and Bar. Phil Killing is VP Communication and Membership. Bob Smiley, member at large, and Patrick Dunn, member at large. Um, on a personal note, I would also like to extend much appreciation to Ann Skipsey for her work as liaison with the town and the board. So thank you for that. Um, overview of the club programs and some of the issues that are going on. Some of these are in place from last year. Uh, one of the primary ones is the last of staffing and hours of operation continues to be a major concern. Um, also, the starting of a process for a new restaurant contractor. And I will have a few um, questions for Anne at the next board meeting. Um, sticking with staffing, we have a full-time position available with a maintenance crew. So that makes it difficult to have the golf course in tip-top shape. Um, I'm encouraged to know that last week there were three interviews to fill that position, so hopefully that occurs. Um, another concern is the succession planning. Uh, I'm in the process right now of trying to bring on board a number of members to be the new board starting for 23-24. Um, I started phone calls in consultation with Neil Bidewell, the pro, um, to do, to start, I started in December. Um, right now I can state that I have six potential candidates in place. So that is a good context for the board going forward. It'd be nice to have a couple more as we have nine positions that are available. Um, for the forthcoming year, um, another con concern, right, and um, I'm sure Paul is finance, and we also have our financial officer here today in David Green. Um, so they would be aware of some of these going forward. One is the repair cost for the clubhouse for a building that was built in 2008. Things are starting to go by the wayside a little bit and degrade. Um, in this regard, the board organized the replacement of four urinals in the two men's washrooms, cost $4,000. They also put in place replacing the grease trap, which is in the Thalassa restaurant, original to the building in 2008, for $4,600. Those are costs right now that the board is bearing. So there, we'd like to have some kind of discussion with that going forward. Those are the main three issues that we have right now. Um, and obviously start trying to stay viable with memberships and right now Paul will mention our memberships look pretty good. Some of the club programs that we have ongoing, obviously there's nine and 18 whole men's and women's clubs continue. We have a fairly viable junior program run by the guys in the pro shop. And now the curling's over, we have some of the curling groups returning for tea times, usually after 3 p.m., so they kind of do a nine and dine. It's early yet in the season, because I noted this meeting last year was in May, so now here we are in March. And I can confirm two tournaments so far. Uh, May 13th, the Amateur Senior Ladies Tournament is available to ladies over the age of 50. Right, and um, they, that winning that leads them to move on to other tournaments that are in the area to obviously, if they can work their way up to be the BC rep. And uh, Neil Bidewell, the pro, has already organized May 2021, the Qualicum Men's Amateur, already filled with 80 members from around the area, right? And that was a successful one last year and will happen again this year. 
Um, I'd like to call up uh, Paul McPhee, the Director of Finance, to present with you to present you a bit of a finance report. Thank you very much, Lynn. Um, okay, I better take my glasses off for this. In the last few years, the club's uh, been running a million dollar operation on the on the town's behalf. Last year, we we, we fit, last year we just finished last year yesterday. Uh, the total was uh, 1.1 million dollars, and we're predicting the same uh, for next year or for the current year. We're in, as I say, we're in day one. With regard to revenues, uh, last year the percentage of operations uh, funded by public green fees was more than half at 51%. It came to $554,000 in green fees. Members' dues and uh, uh, initiation fees came to 45%, and the restaurant rental brought up the rear with, uh, with 5%. In this new fiscal year, we're uh, projecting uh, similar revenue ratios with a slight increase in the uh, membership ratio uh, because we're increasing the membership from uh, 320 members to 330. Uh, last year, as you know, we completed a major new uh, capital addition to the grounds, namely the new uh, workshop and the compound. Town, the town kindly lent us uh, $650,000 for this project. Uh, the requested final payment to the town on behalf of the contractor was on uh, November the 3rd, so you won't hear any more from us as regards, as regards any uh, cost overruns. Um, in fact, the cost overruns were considerable. Um, we paid an additional $300,000 directly out of our capital fund for that project. The cost overruns involved uh, the driveway paving, which has been on the books for at least the last 10 years. Um, a new fuel tanks, uh, heat pump heating for the, for the workshop, and additional uh, fire retardant requirements uh, from the town, um, and, and also new security arrangements for the new building. Uh, the, the, our ability to pay that extra $300,000 was a result of the popularity of golf resulting from COVID. We had two very good years. Uh, where initially we thought we weren't going to have very good years at all. Um, but now our surplus is spent and our capital fund has returned, I could use the word plummeted, to historical levels. <laughs> so we don't have a lot of extra cash. Our expenses, our biggest operational expenses are wages, which make up 34% of, uh, of, of what we spend. Our payments to the town are uh, 18%. Uh, and the pro shop management under Neil Bidewell is at, uh, it sits at about 9.3%. And in general, we do expect higher prices this year for all uh, commodities and services uh, purchased. Additional good news uh, is that we have a healthy waiting list of potential new members uh, for older members who leave. Um, as Lynn mentioned, our contract with Alassa ends in March of 2025, so we're in the process now of, of finding a suitable replacement. And as you also know, our contract with the town ends in uh, 2033, which is 10 years out. And we have a two-year extension to cover the uh, payments for the new workshop um, of that contract. And uh, that's, that's all I have. If you have any questions for myself or Lynn or anybody else here from the board. Thank you, Paul. Any questions to the delegation? Seeing none, I uh, want to thank you, Paul and Lynn and the board for their work, keeping this amazing town-owned facility in shape it is. And I think we, uh, you contribute more to the town in lease payment than the other two golf courses combined in taxes. So well done and thank you for doing all this work. Lynn? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one piece of new business um, I have with me a little bit earlier in the year than last year. I have a check for $85,000, which is our portion um, for the next month or so to uh, take care of the loan agreements that uh, you guys have with us. So if somebody would like to come and pick up this $85,000 check that we have here for you. So next on the list is the Qualicum and District Curling Club, who would like to speak on behalf. 
Heather, how do I uh, reset this thing? Is, oh, okay, sounds good. All right, so um, first of all, thanks very much for uh, your time and consideration and allowing us to be here this afternoon. My name is Stu Shaw. I'm the finance director for the Qualcomm and District Curling Club. I'm here today with our president, Robert Jensen, and our facilities director, Vern McShane. And we're here to discuss with you and look for approval for our annual capital plan for the curling facility. Um, we provided uh, in the earlier uh, presentation some of the details uh, that, that probably is in your package. But I want to summarize a couple things in regards of who we are. The Qualicum and District Curling Club, um, which I'm going to refer to going forward as QDCC, just for, uh, for, for make it a little a short acronym. It's a nonprofit society. We have a dedicated board, 11 member board, um, and a really strong group of volunteers. And we've successfully managed and operated uh, the curling facility for this uh, inclusive community-based rec facility that services over 300 members of all demographics and ages for the past 59 years. We've enjoyed a great working relationship with the town and we're com committed to maintaining that. We presently have, with the town, a five-year lease agreement uh, to operate the facility. Uh, runs through to the end of 2024 with an automatic five-year renewal if both parties have no changes. We are responsible for the operating costs, utilities, interior repairs. The town is responsible from an operating perspective, the external repairs. Capital costs are shared, and that's why we're uh, here today to discuss the capital plan. Um, and we want to talk to you a little bit about the projects that are in that plan. And that's part of our lease agreement. We have um, a, a commitment in the lease agreement that we present annually a five-year updated plan. So each year it'll get, get updated and we present any sorts of changes and, and as they may come forth. The capital costs for the curling facility are allocated in three ways, as noted in the presentation that you would have received. Projects that are town financed, things like um, exterior building, uh, washrooms, flooring, etc. Those that are QDCC financed, such as our um, curling equipment, lounge, kitchen, those sorts of things. And those that are jointly financed. So we have a shared agreement that in certain projects, if it's curling infrastructure related, we share those, uh, the costs of those particular projects. Um, one of the big items in related to, the, to that shared capital um, that we feel is a real benefit to both the town and the club is a reserve trust, it's a trust account that's set up. We set that up here this past year with the town. Um, it's a joint account that's held, holding funds um, for future plant replacement. So in the, we're protecting both the club and the community and the town by putting aside funds from both parties so that that uh, particular reserve is available should we need it down the road. Presently, uh, both parties have contributed equal amounts of uh, 51,250, so the, the total is $102,500. Uh, and we continue to grow that by 7,500 a year, 3,750 each. And so we would contribute that and so does the town and it grows. The capital we're looking for in our plan has that line item in it but it also has all the other projects outside of that, our ice plant replacement project fund. I think this formula works very well. It, uh, it keeps the facility, it's an older facility, but it keep, it's been run very, very well. It's been very well maintained and it keeps it viable in a cost effective way is because a lot of the projects, even though they may be town financed, uh, a lot of QDC labor goes into it to help with those projects. Um, so with that information, um, if I draw the attention to the last page of the presentation, which actually has all the details of the capital projects that we have planned uh, for 2023 and going forward for five years to 2027. So 
in that regard, what do we have planned for 2023? The way that this particular schedule was set up is at the top, it has the town projects, their share of the shared projects, so total town expenditure. Then it has the QDCC projects, those that we are responsible for 100%, and then those that, again, our share of the shared projects. And then it gives our total expenditures, and then you have a bottom line total. So if you look at um, the budget for 2023, I want to talk a little bit about each of these projects. So the first one that we have, and I'm going to only focus on the town because that's what we're looking for here. Um, it's refreshing washrooms and allowance for $7,000. So we already did the main floor washrooms two years ago. It was a very successful project. So we made them handicap accessible, very well received, really made an upgrade to our main floor area. The upstairs lounge area needs those upgraded as well. We would, uh, QDCC would volunteer labor, but these costs would, would, would include the cost of fixtures, flooring, and painting. Second project we're looking at for 2023 is $5,000 for painting the outside side walls of the curling center. Um, it's just it's going to give it a nice facelift. Again, we will contribute labor for pressure washing and doing the painting, but these would be the cost for the supplies for $5,000. Next project we have planned is repairing the outside back deck, deck steps and main level. It's kind of a safety hazard right now. Um, and this $1,500, again, we would be doing the labor, but we're looking at the cost for the, for the supplies to basically kind of just kind of keep, keep it in, in good repair at this point. Um, those are the projects then for $13,500 we'd be looking at next year for the town. For shared projects, we have one that we're looking at, and that is for um, installing permanent sound barriers in our lounge for $7,000. So that'd be $3,500 a piece. We presently have temporary baffling in the roof, but with lots of glass in our viewing areas, trophy cases, etc., the noise level is quite high for our members. We have a fairly strong, high senior uh, membership, and so there's been a lot of um, requests to have something a little bit better and, and more permanent. So this cost would actually put in permanent baffling in the roofs um, and would help mitigate the noise from that perspective. And what we'd be looking at is, although it's a permanent structure, therefore could be a town responsibility because it will be a, t a permanent structure attached to the roof, we feel it as also as an enhancement to our membership, we look at a shared project cost perspective on that. So total capital for projects planned for the town would be 17,000. We then have our annual 3750 town contribution for a total commitment of 20,750. The, the curling club has other projects noted in the schedule there. I won't go into a lot of detail for time constraints, but our total will be 12,750. So we have about 335 planned for this year. Our next four years going out, um, I want to highlight the projects for the town as follows. 2024, we'd like to replace the flooring in the lounge. That particular, uh, the flooring up there is worn. Um, it's, it's got some spacing in there for some safety issues. Um, it, it just needs to be upgraded and we've put a budget in there for next year, 15,000. That's the only project planned for next year, 2025. We've put in as a placeholder, the roof replacement. Roof is uh, needs, um, the town has spent some time looking at our roof. Uh, they've done some evaluation on it, and uh, Vern can offer more on that, but uh, we've, we don't know what that cost will be, as they're kind of leading that project, but it, it, it ultimately is gonna need to be, get done, and we would like to be involved in the consult, consultation in that, because there's some impact to things like um, making sure we don't have any, we have proper insulation, et cetera. 2026, we have the, the plan to put in disability access for upstairs lounge to make it more inclusive, $12,000. And finally, in 2027, we have 15,000 for the actual replacement of the outside deck to make it more usable. And of course, at that time, the repairs we feel would kind of cover us till that point, at which point we would need to then replace it. 
Total capital for the five years amounts to $59,000 for the town, plus their five-year 3750 annual contribution to the future ice plant replacement of 18750 That's what we're kind of looking for, and I open it up for any comments, questions, concerns, etc. Um, just my comment, your timing is perfect. We're just about going into the uh, completion of our budget deliberations, so this will be part of that discussion. Um, again, on behalf of Council, I want to thank the club, the members, the directors, the board members for doing the work you do. It's a great facility. I was there when we had those uh, curlers from Scotland that come over at the, uh, every 10 years. It was a great event, and uh, you, did, uh, you did the community proud by showing the facilities you have and the improvements that were made, particularly with Sandy Horseland, who was also uh, part in the very beginning of building this, uh, this facility. And he was still, he, Steve was there too, welcoming our, our chief and the members from Scotland that came over to Curl. I think you beat him pretty well, didn't you? Yeah, it was a great, great event. We actually won two games. They won two, but on a total point basis, because that's what it was based on, we got 30, they got 21. So we were excited to, <laughs> to contribute. And that goes over Canada-wide. So we, uh, we made a strong contribution here in, in Qualicum Beach. It was great. Thank you. Questions to the delegation? So this will come up at our budget liberations, and then we'll proceed through with your request. Sounds great. I, I have one, well, I still got a couple minutes here. I do have one other item that's kind of non-capital related, and it has to do with uh, a curling event between councillors. I don't know if Parksville has talked to you guys yet. Okay, so uh, they've approached us about you, holding a, Qualicum Beach, Parksville, Councillors Curling game at, the, at our club. We'd love to host that. One of the things in our, in our plans was to, was to have the council over to do a tour of our facilities. Uh, we did that after we did the washrooms a couple years ago. I think it went over quite well just to see what is it that the town's investing in here and what they have for an asset. And so this might be the great opportunity to either come over and participate and play in it uh, it's going to be open for the public for viewing, or you could also just watch and enjoy refreshments and the lounge and enjoy the club itself and the hospitality that we can offer you. So put that in your calendar. I think they're talking around March 17th, so hopefully we see uh, and a good rivalry between the two, uh, two teams. Yes, you're right. It's on the 17th. I think the time that was set, Amit Gower is kind of the, the lead on this from Parksville. And uh, because Parksville's ice is going to come out, I think, this Sunday. And ours is staying longer, so we're, we're doing it here. And the only one, I, and I don't want to blindside you, Councillor Young, but you're the only one I haven't asked if you want to curl on the, on the 17th at 5 o'clock. But I have four who said yes, we will do that. So we'll be there, I think, awesome. at 5 o'clock on the 17th. And, and, and don't be intimidated. We have a curling pro that will be there ahead of time to give you some lessons if needed. Uh, so it, uh, it, it'll be a great uh, way to just to kind of get your feet wet. Any other comments from you guys? Okay, thanks very much for your time. Thank you for your presentation. Next up is the Qualicum Beach Tourism Association, Parksville Qualicum Beach Tourism Association. Lane. Thanks, everybody. Great to be here. I'm here with, uh, well, I'm Blaine Sebos. I'm the executive director of the Parksville Qualicum Beach Tourism Association. And I'm here with our chair, Paul Drummond. Um, he's from Tynemere Resort in Parksville. So I've got a presentation here. I don't know if Wesley's going to be able to get that up for us, but yeah, got it. Okay. <clears throat> Super. So I'd like to, to start with this, this quote because it really says a lot about what tourism does in a community and I, I, I believe the mayor has probably seen this before. But um, if you build a place where people want to visit, you'll build a place where people want to live. And if you build a place where people want to live, you'll build a place where people won't have to work. If you build a place where people want to work, you'll build a place where businesses want to be. And it all starts with a visit and the visit starts with us. So we, we take that role very seriously as the Parksville Qualicum Beach Tourism Association. And uh, 
before I get into the rest of the presentation, I know that we have a, a few councillors who've been on our board of directors as liaisons over the years, so some of this stuff isn't totally foreign to them. Uh, Councillor Young, uh, before she was on, on council, was the a representative, and Councillor Van der Valk is currently our, our representative, and uh, Councillor Harrison was, was on our board before, before that. So our, our vision is to promote and enhance the Parksville Qualicum Beach area as a world-renowned all-season tourism destination. Our mission is um, to successfully market the region externally, to strengthen economic viability for the stakeholders and the communities we serve. And something that we just added recently over the last couple of years, we added this purpose, and this really ties into uh, what I'll be talking about later in, in our presentation. Our purpose is to enhance and protect the Parksville Qualcomm Beach experience. So keep that in mind as, as we go forward here. Um, I should note that we don't have our financials uh, prepared yet. Uh, pr our financials are done by the end of March, so we will circulate those to Council when they're ready. Um, so this is more of an overview of, of the association to sort of bring everybody up to speed on what we're working on and um, and the focus for 2023. Um, there's also uh, quite lengthy reports that were included in the the agenda. Uh, so if if you have any questions about those reports, please feel free to ask. But uh, I won't touch on any of those details uh, in this presentation. So our, our jurisdiction, um, we're called the Parksville Qualicum Beach Tourism Association, but as you see on the map, we're, we're from um, Area E uh, to Area H in the Regional District and including Parksville and Qualicum Beach. So it's quite a diverse area that we represent. Um, we, we like to remind everyone that, that our region goes inland to Cathedral Grove because Port Alberni likes to claim Cathedral Grove and it's not theirs, it's ours. <laughs> so, hands off. Uh, the, the next slide, uh, this is something that we're really proud about as, as an association. Uh, we are accredited by an international organization called Destinations International for um, a high level of standards that we run our organization by. Uh, there's only a handful of organizations like us within British Columbia that have this designation and it's, it's something that we feel as an organization is very important to make sure that the funds that we use on behalf of our stakeholders and our local governments are, are being uh, managed properly and that we're governed in, in a way that is uh, suitable for uh, the, the accountability that we have to everybody. We're a stakeholder-based association. Uh, we're governed by a volunteer board of directors that includes representatives from the accommodations sector, retail, golf, attractions, chambers of commerce, business associations, as I mentioned, our local government liaisons, and Qualcomm First Nations. And uh, we've, uh, we're, we've been uh, reaching out as part of our destination development process to the SNOS as well, um, but I'll touch on that a little bit later. Our core funding is 48% uh, comes from the local hotel room tax. Um, it's the te technical name for that tax is called the Municipal Regional District Tax. And uh, it, it, is, it is previously, before 2018, it was collected only on hotels that had four or more rooms. But now um, MRDT is being collected by all fixed roof accommodations. And that includes short term rentals and bed and breakfast. Um, there's another piece of, of MRDT which is called, uh, and those who are, have been on the board are familiar with this, uh, online accommodations um, platform uh, funding. And uh, that's basically the hotel tax that's collected by Airbnb and any other uh, online platform that has, um, that books on behalf of their hosts. That fund, for the OAP fund, is dedicated exclusively to affordable housing in our region. And we're currently working with uh, SOS on a program to provide uh, accommodation supports to uh, accommodation workers in the region, and we're looking to expand that program in 2023. Other pieces of funding that we have are, are grants. We get a considerable amount of grants from, the, from Destination British Columbia, 
uh, from Google and, and other sources. And uh, then we also have other projects that, and stakeholder buy-in that contributes to our, our revenue every year. Um, for, we're a fairly small team at the moment. Uh, previously, before the pandemic, uh, we were a four-person team plus contractors, and now we're a 1.8-person team. And uh, so it's a, a lot of extra has landed on myself and, and Sean Maisie, who I work with, um, but we've also worked a lot with contractors over the last couple of years. And the re main reason why we haven't staffed up um, is because of the destination development process that we're working on. We didn't want to hire people into roles that might have to change based on what we learn through this destination development process. But this is a really quick overview of the strategies that we uh, implement on behalf of the region. Um, groups and sports, which is uh, amateur sporting teams, tournaments, and um, small meetings and conferences. Uh, for the most part, uh, our efforts in that have been minimized over the last number of years. We do support the, the hotel community with um, RFPs for groups that are looking to bring business to the area to try to make it a little bit easier for planners if, if they want a one-stop shop for booking um, space for their events. But for the most part, the hotels that have that meeting space do a very good job on their own, so we don't focus on that as, as much as we had previously. And then for sports, um, we, we offer the same type of, of support there where we'll work with, with teams and tournaments to um, set aside room blocks and what have you with our, our stakeholder properties. Uh, but we also have an event kit that we make available to uh, any event in the area, but it was primarily developed for sporting um, tournaments. It has a generator and some tents and tables and basically anything that you need to organize a, a small event. So that's available. It's very reasonably priced. It's a $25, I think $25 or $50 fee, and plus a, a damage deposit. And that's our way to basically build the capacity of, of local event of, um, organizers in the region. The main focus of the association from a marketing perspective is leisure visitors, and that's the the visitors that we, we would typically call tourists that come in the summer all year round, uh, what have you. Uh, a lot of that is now focused on online marketing. Um, that's through social media and, and um, digital advertising. We also have a travel media relations focus. We have a, an agency that we contract that's sole purpose is to reach out to mostly regional media to um, attract journalists and influencers to our region and, and share our story with their, their readers. Uh, we have a stakeholder services piece that's really focused on supporting our stakeholders with uh, educational opportunities and um, uh, opportunities for them to build their businesses. And uh, the one that's been getting a lot of uh, attention recently is destination development. And I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit more at later. But um, these are some quite incredible numbers that I'll share. Um, as with our previous, uh, uh, the fellow who mentioned that golf had a very good uh, time over, over the pandemic as far as an insurgence of, of uh, interest in the sport. Um, tourism overall in our region did very well, um, way better than most other destinations in all of Canada. Although we did see a decrease, we still did way better than most other destinations did. And the bounce back that happened between 2020 and 2021 was, it was pretty large. But um, as you see on the chart there, um, we've been uh, collecting the municipal or even list district tax since 2000. And so we've got 23 years of, of history behind us in tracking how the industry is done. And we've only had two years where we've seen decreases in, um, in growth of, of tourism in our region. So it's been a steady growth. Um, peak season and off season growth have both been at the, about the same pace. So the curve is, is about parallel, um, even though we have been focusing primarily on off season for the last number of years. This next slide is one that uh, a lot of people are very surprised to see. This is the, the impact of visitor spending in our region. Um, a lot of people are, are surprised to see that uh, accommodations and food and beverage generate about the same amount of visitor spending in, in the area. 
uh, roughly $65 million worth of direct spending in 2021. Local ground transportation is stuff like, uh, like gas primarily, uh, with the price of fuel these days, that, that's not too surprising that it's, it's expensive. Uh, recreation, entertainment, clothing, gifts, what have you, and, and that adds up to a direct spending amount of $233 million. Uh, and that doesn't include um, spending that uh, people who stay in, with, in campgrounds or with friends and relatives contribute. So it, you can expect that number to be quite a bit larger in reality. On the next slide, this is uh, the economic impact um, in um, be, uh, comparison between 2018 and 2019. Uh, we did the similar report in 2020, but it wasn't overly useful to, uh, because of the events of 2020. But it'll, this gives you a good idea about the number of um, jobs that are created by tourism in the region, the amount of wage, wages that are uh, contributed by the tourism industry in our region as well as our economic output, which is uh, in 2019 was over $320 million. Uh, the next one that I've been alluding to uh, throughout my presentation is destination development strategy. And uh, destination development has lots of different people use different terms to describe it. Uh, the, the mayor probably remembers us talking about a tourism master plan a number of years ago. Uh, this is finally it. Uh, we're, we're finally making this happen. We've, uh, Parksville Quality Beach Tourism is investing the sole amount of the, the costs to make this project um, go ahead and hire the, the consultant that we've identified. Uh, Destination Think is a, a globally recognized leader in destination marketing and management. Uh, thankfully, they're based in Vancouver, um, but they have offices in, um, in Europe, in the US, and um, in Australia. So it's, it was great to be able to hire a relatively local organization to be able to come in and help us with this work. Uh, so the, the work that we've hired Destination Think to work uh, on, on for us is uh, to do the, the baseline research and the destination assessment. Um, that's already been done. Um, the resident stakeholder and visitor surveys and engagement, that's still ongoing, um, but I'd like to um, let everybody know that the first week of February, we had uh, an engagement week, we called it, that was also the kickoff to our, our um, surveys to all those, those different um, groups. We've had over 700 uh, resident surveys um, res respondents, which is a very significant response for our region. We're very happy to see that. Uh, we also had good turnout for a community listening session. We had a good um, kind of a focus group for our residents um, input session, as well as with industry and, and sectors like uh, arts and culture um, uh, over that week. Uh, the next opportunity for engagement uh, on this is uh, the week after next. It's, I believe it's March 15th, which is, uh, we're calling it a co-creation lab that'll be done virtually um, via Zoom and uh, we're just circulating information throughout the community for that too. So there's another opportunity for Destination Think to share what they've learned so far and to bounce it off of everyone to make sure that we've heard um, what, what we've heard is accurate and to give residents and industry another opportunity to provide feedback before we go into the next step, which is the creation of destination vision and strategic goals of um, we're looking 10 plus years. Um, and uh, the, the, as part of that, uh, there will be a five-year implementation plan that will kick off this process. Uh, the great thing about the timing of us uh, choosing to embark on this process at this moment is that the municipal regional district tax is a five-year renewal process, and um, that renewal has to be done this year as well. And so all of the findings that we get from the destination development process can feed directly into the MRDT renewal. And that's what this five-year implementation plan is really going to drive. Um, as part of uh, the ongoing, uh, after we've, we've developed the, the strategy and the vision and the goals and the implementation plan, uh, we're also creating an ongoing community engagement and monitoring and evaluation plan to make sure that uh, the community and industry um, is, is heard with any concerns that they have with the tourism industry and with visitors, as well as to make sure that we're on the right track. 
And this is, the next slide is just a really quick graphic about the whole process um, of the destination development um, approach. And we're, we're basically on that little arrow between steps two and steps three right now. Um, we're hoping to have this, this project done um, by, by June um, because we need that done at that point because of uh, timing in relation to the MRDT. So on, on the next slide, you'll see I touched on the resident and tourism industry co-creation labs. Um, our board is also having a workshop um, in advance of those co-creation labs. Um, another piece that I know a couple of the councillors at the table here are interested to learn more about from us. Uh, we do have some information that we're planning to bring forth to council in regard to short-term vacation rentals in, in our region and the growth that they've been they've had here as well as um, the impact that we perceive they have on affordable housing in our region. And as I mentioned, the strategy is slated to be finished by June and that we're feeding that into the the, the five-year plan as, as far as the M MRDT goes. And uh, yeah, ongoing consultation with local governments and, and all the parties that I mentioned initially to make sure that this is a plan that everybody can hold up as a vision for all of us to work forward together with um, to, to make sure that the tourism industry continues to have um, success, but also has the social license within our, our residents to uh, continue operating because we, we know there's other communities, not only in British Columbia, but across the world that um, in, in some cases they're getting tired of, of visitors and they didn't think about this soon enough. And we're, we're happy that we've chosen this time to do the right thing by our residents to make sure that we're, we're planning the long term so it's viable for everybody. I think I've got three minutes left for questions. <laughs> Thank you very much, Blaine, for your presentation. You're always very informative and concise, and today was no different. Huh. Any questions from the council? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Qualicum Beach Historical and Museum Society. No, you're good to go. You just have to pull the microphone, pull the microphone towards you. You're good. How's that? Yeah, you're good, okay. Leah. Do I have to do something with the timer, or do you do? No. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good afternoon, and thank you for inviting us. My name is uh, Lorraine Bell, and I'm the manager of the Qualcomm Beach Museum. I'm here with members of our board: uh, Vice President David Ireland, Treasurer Meredith Bissaker and past president Chris Lempers, and also my museum colleague Cassell Reed. Uh, Cassell and I are the full-time year-round staff at the museum, and uh, we also hire two seasonal staff during our busy months, <clears throat> May through August, and that's usually two uh, local university students home for the summer. Um, so today I'll share some highlights of our previous fiscal year, and also talk about what's happening now at the museum and some of our future plans. Uh, we did submit a more detailed report, which I hope all of you have had a chance to look at, as well as our financials, um, budget, and work plan. Um, and after my, pres my short presentation, I'll turn it over to David Ireland, and he'll also say a few words. And then we'll have, hopefully, some time for questions. Oh, next slide. We'd like to express our thanks to the town and the wider community of Qualcomm Beach for their support of the museum. We like to think of the museum as a hub of our community, and um, we work hard to make it a welcoming and interesting place for both residents and visitors. And like many other organizations, COVID did impact our operations for a while, um, but in the last year, we've seen a return to normal admissions and even higher participation in some programs and events. And we also saw some big changes last year. Uh, there was some much needed TLC to the powerhouse building. We put in new climate control in the Macintosh building. And finally, after a two year hiatus was the return of our favorite event, Children's Museum Day. So overall, I'd say the last year has been one of, of uh, recovery and of change. Next slide. So on our volunteer board, <laughs> We have some long-serving members continuing in the crucial role of governing our organization, 
And we're also glad to have uh, Lori Richards and Meredith Bissaker as more recent additions. And um, we appreciate it, the input and support of our town liaison, Jean Young. And we've also had some staff changes. Our long-serving manager, manager Natanya Waddell, uh, retired and moved on to new adventures. I stepped into the management role after eight years there as uh, museum coordinator. And also joining us was our, our new staff member, Cassell Reed. And um, Cassell brings extensive operational and curatorial expertise to the great benefit of our community museum. And as you can see, we have a whole raft of dedicated volunteers, and some come once per week to help out at the museum, others once per year, and they're all incredibly helpful. Next slide. And this slide is just to show that we prioritize supporting local businesses, and we also collaborate with local organizations like the Qualicum First Nation and the school district. We have um, solid working relationships with various government agencies, such as the BC Arts Council, and other nonprofits, including the BC Museums Association. Go oh, next slide. So our exhibits are really the public face of the museum and what uh, visitors come to see. We've been improving our permanent exhibits and also creating many temporary displays to keep things fresh and interesting. So the museum is interesting for people to come back more than once per year, even, even locals. And we often find that locals say, oh, I've lived here for 25 years and I've never come until my brother visited me from somewhere else and it's actually quite good. So <laughs> that's always nice when local people come to visit us. Next slide. Yeah, um, so we've lately been opening and creating activities for special days such as Truth and Reconciliation and Orange Shirt Day, Remembrance Day, Family Day and the Brandt Festival. And another recent step is to create outreach kits um, and these are boxes with local history materials that we can share with local teachers to use in their classrooms. And um, for the last few years, we've also been hosting a, a Pro D Day, at least one per year. And we invite teachers to come and join us at the museum and we do various activities with them. So the last one we did was on um, February 17th and we had, did two sessions and um, some elementary school teachers and some high school teachers and uh, about 20 teachers overall participated. Next slide. As I mentioned earlier, the powerhouse has become a welcoming and dynamic community space. Um, last summer, we hosted a nationally recognized traveling exhibit about the Japanese Canadian internment, and that had about 1,700 visitors and many positive comments. And we also used this space for the ever popular QB Reads series, um, Children's Museum Day, and, and last year we did a Kids Spooky Day in October. Oh, next slide. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, some other cool things that have been happening. Um, the Heritage Forest Tree Slab was installed with the help of the town, and also a new art installation titled Appropri Appropriately Enough, Where the Dog Salmon Run. We very much appreciate our collaborative and productive relationship with the town. We've found in particular that the town's support with grounds and buildings has helped us maintain an excellent standard that many visitors comment on positively. And we feel that the combination of core and reliable funding, uh, solid governance and permanent staff, as well as having a, a sound strategic plan, has really helped us and continues to help us secure funds from other sources uh, for both operational and project costs. And so we look forward to continuing to work with the town and we hope that our fee-for-service agreement can be renewed along similar terms. Here's a look at this, this year's work plan with some key things highlighted. Um, one of our main goals this year is to get started on some improvements in accessibility. Um, we had a very sad thing happen. A little boy came to join us for Children's Day and he had some mobility challenges and he, he couldn't participate. So we thought we'd like to fix that for the future by putting a path um, on the outside of the museum. And we'd also love to start working on an elevator for the inside. Um, we find that many are, of our visitors are older um, and they sometimes have trouble with the chairlift that we have. So our long-term goal or vision is to have a, a elevator in there so that everyone can have equal 
access and enjoyment to all parts of the museum. Um, as I mentioned, we have these reports available if anyone would like to review them and also maybe take the opportunity to enjoy this nice historical photo of Colican Beach. <laughs> Next slide. And so that's the end of my presentation. I'm going to pass it on to David Ireland to say a few words. And also, we welcome any comments or questions you might have. Thank you, Lorraine. Uh, David, if you care to say a few words now. Mr. Mayor and uh, councillors, uh, fellow presenters, uh, staff, uh, I think you would all agree that we are very privileged to live in Qualicum Beach. Just pinch yourself, take a minute and do that. It is such a wonderful, inviting and engaging community and I feel so privileged to be the Vice President of the Qualicum Beach Historical and Museum Society. It's a vibrant organization. Lorraine has done us very proud uh, this afternoon and uh, I'm excited because uh, I want to tell you, yesterday her grant application to the BC Arts Council, assisted by her assistant, Kissel, has landed us $20,000 for the coming year, and the uh, promise of an extension to that year over year as the program goes forward. I think it was Winston Churchill who said, never let a crisis, a good crisis, go wasted. And um, sadly, uh, the, the developments uh, that uh, fell to us through the uh, restrictions uh, and the, the huge tragedy that was COVID, paradoxically, has given us time to sort of regroup, look at our uh, operations more critically. We were enforced quiet time and we've used that to great advantage and been very successful in acquiring a number of grants. It's really put a financial footing under the museum and assisted us as has the council uh, with the mayor's direction over the past uh, several years and I speak specifically of uh, going back in my tenure, um, Adam Walker, MLA and then followed by Scott Harrison and then by and Skipsy, and now Gene Young. We are well supported by the town, and we're greatly appreciative of it. As uh, Lorraine has shared you on the view graph this afternoon, uh, very ambitious program, but if you're gonna go, go big and plan, and we have many um, initiatives in the offing. Uh, another reference to Lorraine, uh, oftentimes people come to Qualicum Beach, or I'm talking to people who I thought knew the area, and they said, you know, David, We've, we've never been to the museum before. And I said, well, you're coming with me right now. <laughs> and uh, it's always been enjoyable. So we are on a very good footing. And I think uh, in every respect, the choice that we've made in electing, selecting, and promoting Lorraine Bell to our manager has just paid off in spades for us. And it continues to do so. So Lorraine, my public thanks to you for stepping up and doing that job. We're in a very good place. and. It's so, so good to have you on board. <laughs> I, I use this platform unabashedly to say that we are still looking for a president for the uh, Qualicum Beach uh, Museum and uh, Historical Society. Chris Lemfers has uh, has done a yeoman service for us and continues to do in that board. But it's not meant to be a lifetime sentence. Uh, so <laughs> at some point, uh, Chris, there will be a reprieve. <laughs> but please stay with us. We greatly value that. And uh, we've had uh, a couple of new folks join us. Uh, um, Meredith Bisker, our new treasurer, had to, to step out uh, early. She has another commitment center, but another excellent choice in the museum um, board of directors. And uh, Laurie Richards has uh, come on strength with us in this past year and doing a very good job there too. So thank you very much for your attempt, but thank you most all for your great town support. We have been richly blessed with your guidance, your leadership, and your support. Thank you. Happily take any questions or comments at this time. Any questions or comments? I just want to say again, thank you. And your enthusiasm for living in Qualicum Beach, when you saw the list of organizations uh, running facilities that the town owns and how well they do, um, that makes Qualicum Beach special. It does. Um, last year we had the um, volunteer appreciation. And I think there might have been, how many people would there have been last year that came and be invited? Thank you. 
Well over 100. And um, our MP said, you know, this is the difference between a city and the town of Kuala Lumpur Beach, where you have so many volunteers networking from different organizations. There's only two per organization, and the room was, I thought, pretty full. So I thought, this is what makes Kuala Lumpur Beach special. And your enthusiasm expressing that just earlier in your presentation is contagious. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Next is the old schoolhouse art center. Um, not sure who's going to speak on behalf of the old schoolhouse. You are from the Old School House Art Center? Yes. And then you're next. You're up. We're a bit ahead of schedule. Yeah, we're waiting for our third party to join us. Okay. He's on his way. I hear there's a rumor about wanting a recess, so if there's a five minute break, are you okay with that? All right, we have a five minute break. Thank you.
All right, we'll, we'll start the meeting up again, and Alana, you're next. Thank Perfect, you. thank you for having me. My name's Lana, I'm the Executive Director at the Old Schoolhouse Art Centre, and I'm here today to discuss a renewal of our lease for 2023. Um, we are asking Council to renew our lease for a five-year lease, and we would also like to discuss and bring to light several repairs that are needed to Tosh at, um, at the location that it's at, continued maintenance on the exterior of the building and repairs for the back garage door. We also would like to add a paragraph to the lease that specifies that the landlord should maintain the gardens and the exterior, which you guys have done for years, but has never been in the language of the lease. Um, we would also, we would also wonder if you guys would consider adding a clause to the lease for a retail gift shop. We've had it for a number of years, but it hasn't been in the language of the lease as well. And then I can just update you guys on the going on at the Old Schoolhouse Art Centre. We continue to have a resident artist program. We have eight resident artist studios, about 35 artists live, uh, work at Tosh um, during the week. We run three exhibitions every two months. We have a robust education program. We have a very good music program that has music on Sundays. We will be doing summer concerts. We have a cabaret. There's only 10 tickets left if anyone wants to come this month. Um, and then we have our gift shop downstairs. We also have a few rentable spaces, a community art space, as well as a new digital creation hub, which is centering Tosh as a creation hub and as the hub for the uh, regional, uh, super regional Vancouver Island arts ecosystem. And so we have a lot more programming that's going on there that's regional to Vancouver Island, but that's acting as Qualcomm Beach as the sort of center point for these projects that will be taking place over the next two years. Um, some of those include this digital creation hub, which we are also populating hopefully in five other municipalities, and a very large research project from the SFU Data Lab. It's a half a million dollar research project over two years that will take place as Tosh as the center point. Um, and that will provide artists and arts administrators with ways to collect their own data. Um, and we have several other, other projects through Creative Coast that we continue to generate. Um, that, in addition to all the exhibitions and everything else that we have going on in the building, um, is what we are up to these days. Uh, so just for clarification, you mentioned mm -hmm. something in the, in the language where it doesn't really spell out the um, outside repair and lawn maintenance, but there was something else about uh, retails, retail sales? Yes, we don't have anything in our lease that specifies if we can or cannot have a retail gift shop. We have had a gift shop for a number of years. As a nonprofit, we are allowed to, but it's not in the language of the lease, and if the town would like to incorporate that, we are open to having that be included. Right, we'll have a, we'll have a discussion about that with council and staff. Um, thank you for the presentation. Anyone else have a question, comment? Thank you, Lana. Thank you. Oh, by the way, would you introduce the people who came with you? I know there's some other guests that came with oh, you. Yes, Susan Lewis, the board president, and Phil Dwyer, our music director. Thank you. Thank you. So we have one more delegation for um, today, but they're not here yet because we're quite a bit ahead of schedule. So as soon as they arrive, we'll have the call can be Chamber of Commerce to make a presentation. But in the meantime, sit back and relax. <laughs> I'm not sure what time they're going to be here. 3.15, I hear. Okay, so we'll have another six, seven minutes break. Thank you. And don't feel bad if you're leaving in the meantime.
So we'll, we'll reconvene the meeting. Um, Kim, the reason why you were called up because the other delegations were not as long as we had thought they might be. So um, it's all good to be concise. And uh, but so I'm happy that you could accommodate us by coming sooner. You have the floor. And if you turn the microphone on, Kim, there's the green button at the base. At the base. At the base. No. There it is. No, now it's on. Okay. So thank you for uh, for receiving us today. It's a. Um, this will be my last presentation to the Town Council of Qualicum Beach. Um, I'd like to introduce my, the incoming Executive Director of the Qualicum Beach Chamber of Commerce, Mike Garland. Uh, he started today, and so uh, he will be taking this spot going forward and hopefully having some good conversations with you. Um, I included our our very basic work plan in the package that you received today. Um, I do want to highlight a couple of things, um, which we've had some initial discussions with uh, Mayor Westbrook and, and Councillor Vandervock about, and that's the visitor center is is the big one. It's a poor, tired old building, and uh, the otters have made it their home, which has created some further problems um, in keeping them under control. They're like bad children. Um, and uh, we would like to be, uh, we'd like to be able to replace the building uh, over the next probably two to four years. It's going to take some time, obviously, to raise some money, uh, to create uh, some proper architectural drawings to bring to, uh, to, bring to you for, uh, for your approval. Um, the biggest ask, is, as I mentioned when we met earlier, is to have a member of the town staff and or council as part of the planning committee. Uh, it's an important uh, piece of infrastructure for the community and it really needs input from as many sources as possible. So hopefully you'll, uh, you'll take that into consideration and um, appoint somebody from, I, th I think probably it would be beneficial to have somebody from staff as well as somebody from council to participate in that process. Uh, we've got a couple of bird dogs um, who are very interested in moving along in uh, uh, Howie Hamilton and, and David James and they've explained to me that they're very good at finding dollars so hopefully they will uh, they'll be applying themselves to the task for this particular project because it's going to take some money to make it work so um, the other one that I wanted to draw your attention to is the kiosk. Thank you very much for uh, the approval for some of the funding. The other f uh, part of the funding coming from the Parksville Qualicum Beach Tourism Association. Um, it's almost done. It's uh, it's up at Custom Express Trailers. Uh, they're just waiting for some warmer weather to be able to finalize the internal cladding. Then we get it to make it look fantastic and put Qualicum Beach all over it in, in big bold letters and uh, pictures and images so that people get uh, get the idea. And uh, again, we're going to need some cooperation and, and um, reliance on, on the town as our partners in this venture to be able to locate it properly, uh, hopefully in the downtown core for the most of, most of the, uh, the exercise, but it's also going to have the ability to go out and promote Qualicum Beach at various events within the Oceanside region. So. Um, we'll be looking to you for uh, for some support in terms of locating it, hopefully primarily in the downtown. Um, the unit itself will contain all of the information that we dispense at the visitor center down on the beach to guide people through uh, through the through the village core and uh, other parts of the community. So, and and to do the promotion. Now, a piece that I didn't send you on purpose. Um, last August, we, uh, we engaged with the uh, students at Vancouver Island University who are uh, they're the Masters in Planning students. And we engaged with them to complete a survey um, in, of the businesses in Qualicum Beach in preparation for your arrival in October. Uh, we wanted to be able to put a fresh face on um, the concerns that uh, that our current business uh, community has in terms of supporting a healthy uh, business community and look at what we need going forward. Um, it's not a surprise. Housing is a huge issue. 
Uh, every business that we talk to, the, their primary concern is staffing, and housing is a significant portion of that staffing. Um, back in 2017, we did a, another study where we looked at, we did a labor market needs uh, assessment. And again, the big three were um, affordable housing, access to transportation, and uh, local skills development. Uh, we've recently undertaken to provide some local skills uh, development through our partnership with North Island College, and that's going to start actually tomorrow. We're going to train a number of local uh, residents uh, to be prep cooks, so to help out the food and beverage industry. Um, but the other ones, housing, transportation, those are local government purview, and we want to just make sure that you hear that those are big issues in our community. Um, I will make this report available to you. Uh, so that you can have a good in-depth look at it. Um, again, like I said, 44% uh, of our businesses say that they're negatively affected by a lack of housing. And that's primarily related to the fact that um, they're having a difficult time finding staff. 55% uh, of the businesses are negatively affected by the labor shortages. And parking is not a huge issue. But it's a bit of an issue. Um, most uh, businesses feel that there is adequate parking near their businesses, but 42% said there isn't. So um, maybe because it's not at the front door, I'm not sure. Um, but 81% said that they would not support paid parking. So that ties together um, my personal opinion. I think you should have paid parking because it moves people through the spots a little faster, but our business community says no, so that's where we'll go. Um, in terms of infrastructure, um, people would like to see a, a better, work, better job in terms of providing pedestrian um, pedestrian walkways, uh, public transit, and um, uh, bike lanes. So um, those are things that they want to look at in terms of, of, a, of a infrastructure. And of course, taxation is a huge question, and I don't know why people ask, because everybody wants lower taxes. Um, but uh, I know for a fact that Qualicum Beach's taxes are not onerous. Uh, I think you're pretty much middle of the road in terms of looking at business taxes, and we absolutely, as, an or as a business organization, support that approach. We're not looking at 10.7 or 19.7, which I see in the news in some of the more major municipalities. And, and I hope when your budget comes through that we're looking at maybe 3.5 or 4%. So uh, those, are, those are numbers that the business community can absorb. I'm um, happy to take your questions. And like I said, I will provide this very excellent report to you. Uh, we're very pleased with the results and wanted to look at it. Uh, we, we undertook the, the, the exercise because we wanted to be able to provide you with what the business community is looking for in Qualicum Beach. So, Thank you. Questions to the delegation? So the location for a new visitor center, has that been bandied about? Has it been bandied about? Oh, absolutely, it's been bandied about, but there have been no decisions made. Um, we, would, we would like to keep it on the beach. We would like to, uh, ideally, I think if we were able to build uh, adjacent to where the current visitor center is located now, and then take the current visitor center away and turn that into green space parking, whatever the town sees a need for. And we do want to include washrooms in the new facility. And we also think that the, uh, the chamber and uh, the traveling public would benefit <laughs> from some sort of a, um, uh, we'd like to see some kind of a revenue stream, um, whether it's a, um, who knows what, uh, you know, whether the, the fellow that rents the stand up panel boards would like to come in and rent some space there, or whether a coffee shop would like to come in and rent, or just something to help uh, offset the costs and, and the ongoing maintenance costs. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Well, thank you, Kim, and um, thank you for your many years of service. Yeah. And uh, I wish you the very best in your retirement years and anything else you want to undertake. We're not going to retire yet, but there are okay. some other things I want to undertake. So. Okay, very good, Kim. Thank you very much, Mayor Westbrook. Thank Thanks. You. And we welcome Mike Garland as our next uh, chamber um, manager. So that's just for Qualicum Beach.
Yep. You, 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 like you have kind of two hats for a while, Parkville and Qualicum Beach. I got several hats. Oh, okay. But, but uh, yeah, no, Michael is going to serve the community of the business community at Qualicum Beach, and Parksville's in the process of hiring somebody to serve the business community in, in, uh, in Parksville. Okay, so. great. Thank you. Oh, uh, Councilor Young has a question. Just uh, one question. Uh, where are we putting the uh, visitor um, kiosk? Well, that's a question that we need to discuss with, with you. Uh, so hopefully, Can it sit up Mike. Can on the sidewalk, so it um, take up it, a parking spot. Sure. The way, well, it could be in a parking spot. The way that it's built, um, it travels around on a flatbed trailer, which um, can be will be removed. So uh, there's a, a set of jacks that uh, that secure the kiosk. Uh, the jacks lifted off the trailer. It comes back down so that it's fairly level. There's one step up into it rather than a bunch. Uh, it's got a big window that opens on the side to serve the public. Um, it's got its own power, but it can also be plugged into um, to uh, power off off off, uh, off the unit. Um, but we want to discuss it with you where we are able to put it because we want to be able to put it on town-owned land. Okay, Councillor Vandevon. Thank you. Um, I'm just wondering, you don't have any kind of uh, financial information attached to what you've given us? Do you have some financial statements or budgeting or wh where you're spending your money and how you plan to spend your money and where you have spent your money in the last year? I can, I can. I didn't bring it. I can provide that to you. Okay. Um, you know, we have right. a budgeting process. The board's approved the budget for 2023. Um, I'm, I'm happy to, to, to provide that to you. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Well, thank you, Kim, and I uh, wish you the very best. Thanks. Thank you. Well, that's, um, that concludes the delegations. Um, the only thing left on the agenda is adjournment. Councillor Skipsy, Councillor Vandervoort, we are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Adjourned.